So lead code problem of the day and here we bring solution for today's lead code problem that is called as find in a mountain array. This is the most interesting question and I'm going to solve this question in three important steps. So I highly recommend you to stay till the end of my video. Just in case if you're new to our channel, subscribe the runtime error to get the daily solution for the lead code problem of the day. So let's start with the today's problem. So what does today's question says that they were given an array called as the ARR and that array is called as a mountain array. So what does this mountain array says that? So here they have given everything about it. So a first value will be less than my second, second is less than third and third will be less than till i minus one. And at particular point I, my array start decreasing, which means can I say that my first array is strictly increasing and at particular point my array starts strictly decreasing. And this is called as a mountain array, like simply just look like a mountain. So this is what they call as a mountain array. And at the same time, they have told us my size of my array will always be greater than or equal to 3, which means I will not have array of size 1 and 2. I will be having an array of size strictly greater than or equal to 3. So what does we need to find is they have given a mountain array and we need to return the minimum index of target value. What does a minimum index is that? Say for example, I have an array 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3 and 1. And I need to check whether my key 3 is present or not. So here we can say that the 3 is present at index 2 and it has also present at index 3, 4, 5 at index 5. So which is the minimum index? So 2 is the minimum so I need to simply return 2. So I hope so you got me that we need to return the minimum index of that particular value. And just in case the value which I am looking in the array if that value is not present I need to simply return minus 1. And one of the most most important and defining part of this question is this section. Right. What does it mean is we cannot call mountain.get more than 100 times which means we need to call mountain.get value or this function exactly equal to 100 times or less than equal to 100 times. We are not supposed to call more than 100 times. Therefore, if you are calling the mountain.get more than 100 times, it will show us wrong answer. It is directly stated in the question. And since it is not our normal array, we cannot access the value of array like this, right? Like we are mentioning the name of an array and with index. No, we cannot access the value of array by using an index. We have to access the value of my array using the get function. Similarly, in order to get the length of my array, I need to follow mountain.length. So I hope so you understood the meaning of the question. Now let's try to define this section more in detail. So what does this section say is that what see my first element is less than second, second is less than third, dot 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 until my i point. And at this particular point, I, my array start decreasing. So can I say that till my 12, my array is in increasing order, increasing order, strictly increasing order. At point 12, my array is strictly decreasing order. So simply I will write here, till the year, my array is strictly increasing. My array is strictly increasing. And from this point till end, my array is strictly decreasing. So I hope so you got the meaning of this section. Now if you try to plot this number on the graph, it will look like this. See, you, will, you can see over here is till 12 my array is strictly increasing. There is no any duplicate element in this. And again, it is strictly decreasing. Again, you find there is no any duplicate element in this. So I hope so you got the meaning of the mountain array. This is how it just simply look like a mountain. You can see it. It is simply look like the mountain. Now let's try to analysis since it contains strictly increasing and strictly decreasing. Now the question comes, will my array contains a duplicate value? Because the question directly says that it is strictly, right? It is strictly. So with the help of this word, we might find that there might not be any duplicate number in my array. But the point is, will my array contains a duplicate value? The answer to this question is yes. We can see here is that till 12, my array is strictly increasing. And to this section, there is no any duplicate number. We can see it's 1, 2, 4, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. There is no any duplicate value. But to the right of this 12, I have 4, which is already was present in strictly increasing. Which means, if my array is strictly increasing and strictly decreasing, there might be a possibility that the element which is present in my strictly increasing part, that element can also be present in my strictly decreasing part. Here you can see that I got 4 in decreasing part, I also have the 4 in my increasing part. I have 7 in my decreasing part, I also have the 7 in my decreasing part. So one thing we came to know that, even though it is strictly increasing and strictly decreasing, my array will still contains a duplicate values in my element. So let's try to analyze the solution and try to check how we can solve this question. 
Now, what they have told us, they have given one particular array which is called as a mountain array. So what does mountain array say is that at particular point, my array is strictly increasing and after this point, my array is strictly decreasing. And we need to find simply whether my target element is my present in my array or not. And if my target element is present in my array, I need to return the minimum index of it. So what does minimum index say is that, say for example, my 11 is present at index 2 and my 11 is present at in index 9. So which is minimum of this 2? So I need to return the 2. So this is how we need to return the minimum index. Now the question comes, will the linear search work? Because what we are supposed to do, we are supposed to check simply whether my array contains a target element or not. So if I try to apply the linear search on this array, what will happen? I will check on this element. Is it 11? No. Is it 11? No. Is it 11? No. So I will go on comparing every single element till I come across the 11. Now I find the 11, then I simply return 8. Because it is the first occurrence of 11 and I need to return the minimum index that is 8. But the point is, do the linear search looks a lot more easier but the question is will this linear search work on this question because the question says that what does the question says that we cannot make more than 100 mountain dot get function calls right but point is say for example i got this 11 at an index 9 now say for example i get an array of size say for example 400 and this is my 11 present at an index suppose at 500 right then what i need to do is i need to go on checking this this, 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 till I come across 500 index. So, but the point is, as I told you earlier that we cannot access the element of an array normally like we do in normal problems. We have to use the get function. But what we're doing over here is, we're calling the get function 500 times, which is for sure greater than or equal to 100, which is greater than 100. And anyhow, we are going to get a wrong answer because we are trying to call the mountain dot get more than 100 times right we are calling it more than 100 times so for sure even though we are able to get the answer but it will show you the wrong answer because we are not allowed to make the call of mountain.get more than 100 times so the question becomes how we can solve this question so the one thing is for sure if you are given one particular array and we need to find the one target element and the linear search is not working on it so what comes in our mind for sure binary search right so let's try to check how does the binary search works on our problem we know that in order to work the binary search, there is one prerequisite. And what does that? My array has to be sorted. My array has to be sorted. But if you try to look at this array, is this array sorted? Is this array sorted? Completely no. Because if I try to observe it, I can say that this array is partially sorted. Because at this particular point, my array is sorted and again it is start decreasing. So this is not a completely sorted array. Then the question comes, how does a binary search will work on this array? So let's try to analyze it. Can I say, till index 7, my array is completely sorted, right? Till 12, my array is completely sorted. And after 12, my array is started decreasing, which means there is this break point. This is a break point up to which my array is completely sorted, right? Till 12, my array is completely sorted. And from this part, my array is started decreasing. So one thing I can make sure that if I find one particular element up to which my array is completely sorted, and after that, my array is completely decreasing. So can I simply say that if once I get, once I get this value that is 12 or the index that is 7, I can simply apply binary search on this part and binary search on this part. Because if we try to observe, this part is completely sorted and this is what we require for the binary search, right? I have to keep my array completely sorted. So can I say from 1 to 12, my array is completely sorted and I can simply apply binary search on it. Whereas on the other hand, if I try to get the values from 11 to 3, my array is also completely sorted, but it is sorted in decreasing order. And this is sorted in increasing order. But the point is, don't matter whether it is increasing or whether it is decreasing, what matters is my array is completely sorted. Right? So, can I simply say that once I find this particular element or the index of an element, which we call as a P element. Now the question comes, why we are calling P to 12? Because we can say that my 12 is greater than 10 and my 12 is greater than 11. And to the left of my 12, all the elements are sorted in increasing order. Right? It is sorted in increasing order. Whereas all the elements to the right of my 12 are sorted in a decreasing order. So I need to simply find where is my peak element. What does that peak element? We, the element which is greater than its both the neighbors. So once I get the peak element, I can simply apply binary search on the left part and the right part. 
Now the question comes, why do I need to apply binary search on both the parts? That is on the left part and then the right part. Because there might be a possibility that an element might be present in this part or might be present in this. Now the question comes, see for example, if I'm getting the value at this part, do I need to search in this part? Absolutely no. Because at the end, what do I need to return? I need to return the minimum index. And as you can see that here, I'm getting the minimum index. I don't need to check over here. Because even if you are able to get the value in the right part, it will give you the maximum index. But the point is, we need to have a minimum index. So what I will do is, so let's have to write. So first thing we will do is we will find the peak element. We'll find the peak element, which means the element which is greater than its previous and greater than its next element. And the second is apply binary search. Apply binary search on both that is left part and right part. Now if I'm able to get the value in the right part, I will not check on the in the right part. And if I'm not able to get the value in the left part, I will check in the right part. And in both the cases, if I'm not getting any value, I will simply return the minus one as it is told in the question. So simply what I will do is, first of all, I will try to check the peak element. Now let's try to analyze how we can find the peak element. Let's try to analyze where we can find the peak value. It can be present in X or Y or Z. So the question comes, how we will come to know that in which section that is increasing or decreasing or at the peak, I will find the peak value. So say for example, I'm calculating the mid as mid is equal to low plus high divided by two. And now from this, that is mountain dot array, I'm writing the short form as MA, mountain dot array of mid is less than mountain of array of mid plus one. So what does this statements indicate? Can I say with the help of these statements, I can easily just that I'm standing at this portion because as I told you, my X will always be less than X plus one. Since this section is always in increasing order. Therefore, with the help of this case, I can see that I'm present over here. But the question comes, will I find the peak value at this section? Absolutely no, because all the values in these sections are in increasing order. And as I told you, my peak value has to be greater than its previous and has to be greater than its next value. But here I will not find any value which is less than greater than its previous because X is less than X plus one. I cannot say this is a peak value. So I can simply say that whenever I occur at this condition, I have to shift either to Z or either at to Y because there is no any such case where I can find the peak value at increasing order. So during this first case, simply what I will do is I will simply shift my low to its right of mid. So I will simply do low is equal to mid plus one. Now the second case, say for example, if I'm getting the mid as M of mid is equal to equal to mountain of area of mid plus one. Will this case will exist? Will this case will exist where both the value at mid and mid plus one will always be equal? Absolutely no. Because there are the three cases you can say there is no any case where I'm getting the equal to sign. So this case will not be possible. Therefore, we don't need to worry about handling the equal to. And now the third case that is possible that what can I say is mountain of array of mid is strictly greater than mountain array dot get mid plus one. Now, what does it mean is which are the two cases where I can find this third one? I can I simply say that these are the two cases that either I will be pointing at this position or either I am getting at this position. But the point is, can I say if I'm getting this value, then mid will be strictly in my peak value? Absolutely no, because what I'm getting over here is, okay, I'm getting that X, my Z is greater than its next value or my Z, Y is greater than its next value. But the point is, what about its previous value? Because as I told you, my peak value has to be greater than its next value and has to be greater than its previous value. So from this section, we can come to know that the next value is greater than the smaller than the peak. So I need to find, do I have the previous value, which is less than peak. So that's the reason why if I'm getting this value, I simply transfer my high to mid to mid. I will not transfer to mid minus one because say, for example, I'm standing over here and getting the mid. There might be a possibility that I'm getting the peak value either at the Z or somewhere between here, here. So I simply cannot transform my low high beyond Z, beyond Z or beyond mid. I can find peak over here or I can find peak over here. So I hope so you got the, these three sentences really well. Now, once we find the peak value, now on this array, we can come to know that I got the peak value over here. Say for example, this is my peak index. Now what I will do is, 
Now suppose I need to check whether the value 8 is present or not. I need to check my 8 is present or not. Now what I will do is, since I know that in order to apply the binary search, my array has to be completely sorted. But one thing I came to know that, till my peak index, my this array is completely sorted. So can I simply apply the binary search on this section first? And afterward, I can apply the binary search on this section. So I have to use the two binary search. I have to use two binary search. That is first from zero to peak index. And my second is from peak index plus one to n minus one. That is from this point to this point and later from this to this. So once you apply the binary search, we will simply check with the help of binary search whether my key is present or not. If it is present, simply return the index of it. And if it is not present, simply return the minus one of it. So I hope so. You got the algorithm very detailed manner. Now let's try to check the C++ and Java code for this problem. So this is the code for finding the peak value. Here you can see that I wrote the function that is a peak index. And what I did is I simply passed the two parameters that is mountain array and this is the size of my array. And I simply search. And I use a two that is a start and end to point the two search spaces. Say for example, this is my array. This is will be by start and at the end, this will be my end. So with the help of these two variables, I started searching and I simply found the mid. Then I check if my mid is less than mid plus one. What does it mean is I'm simply standing at this section. So I need to simply move to either this or this. So this is what I did. So I simply shifted my start to mid plus one. So I came over here. And what does it simply say is that it says uh, these two condition. If I'm getting the mountain that said a y is greater than its previous, I have to come back. Because either my peak can be this, right? These and these are not my peak value. My z is my peak value. So I have to come over here. And finally, my start will automatically point to my peak index. So I simply return the peak index. So this function is all about finding the peak index. Now let's try to check how we can apply the binary search for it. So here is a function that are the two binary firm functions that we need to apply as I told you earlier. So this is our basic function that first of all I calculated the size of my array. Then I found the peak index as I told you over here. This is the function used to find the peak index. So once I get the peak index, what I did is I called the first binary search from the index 0 to the peak index. Say for example, this is my peak index. So what I told you earlier that till my peak index, my array is strictly increasing order. So first I'm applying the binary search on this particular portion. And later on, I'm again applying the binary search on the remaining portion if and only if I've not got any value or the index of that particular value. Here I can say that if my index is not equal to minus one, I don't need to search on the left right part because I need a minimum index, so I don't need to go to the right part. If it is equal to minus one, what does it mean it? At this particular portion, I'm not getting the index or the value which I'm looking for. Therefore, I need to check, is that value present to the right of my peak index? So again, I pass that is peak plus one to n minus one. That is from this section to this section, I need to search. So this was the most simplest question. Only thing is we need to understand the meaning of question thoroughly. So I hope so you understood the meaning of the question and the solution of this question properly. So just in case if you're new to our channel or you really like the way I'm teaching you or just giving you the solution for the question, do hit the subscribe button so that you can come across a daily lead code problem. Till then, I'm signing off.